My stir fry was so good this lunch. <laughs> what did you have? I haven't had any lunch yet. What? I know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lupe, your Vice President Academic Experience. And I'm Carolina, your Vice President for Student Engagement. Sadly, these are our last few months as officer since we're coming to the end of a term after two years of amazing experiences at Kent Union. So we've obviously had very different introductions and kind of in ways into Kent Union, but tell me a bit about how you found out about what the union did, how you first got involved and what made you run to be an officer. Right, so I started all the way back in 2018. I first got here, I joined the fencing club. I was like, wow. I want to be on committee. Like, this sounds like fun. I want to get involved in the running of it. Why? I don't know. I just like to be in charge of things. And so then the next year I ran for women's captain, got it, got involved with Kent Union in terms of like, you know, booking matches and mini buses and the whole shebang. So I kind of got to know our sports coordinator and then slowly but surely also the sabbatical officer who was dealing with sports at the time, which was Emily Window. Um, and then she really liked the fencing club, so she came to our socials and then she was like, oh my god, you should run for network chair, because why not? And I was like, oh, what's that? She was like, oh, Kent Union Parliament, like you get to make decisions and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was like, wow, okay, cool, yeah, let's do it, because I was also a student rep. And I was like, everything else, just put it on, let me have a big juicy CV with nice things. Um, and so I did, and I got it, and then I was on Parliament, and I got to meet the other officers, and I was like, wow, there's like a whole team of students. Well, you know, not adults. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, adults, but not Young adults. Young people. <laughs> Young people. <laughs> yeah, that's Running the show, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. <laughs> and so then I helped her with her re-election campaign when the role first changed to student engagement. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was kind of my first experience campaigning and getting involved in like the politics of it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this is also really cool. And slowly but surely, like my excitement levels were going up. And then I was like, let me do it. Let me go for it. And I went for it. The year afterwards, I ran for student engagement and I didn't get it. Everyone Ooh. knows this story already, but <laughs> I didn't get it. I never lose. So that was kind of wild. Um, and I was like, oh, <laughs> reality check. But the good thing was that that was still during my degree. I hadn't graduated mm. yet. So I was going to do it as a placement year if I had got it. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, the year after that, during COVID, shock horror, I was like, let me try again. I have so much free time. I might as well. Um, and then I did because I just kind of really got sucked into Kent Union at that point and I was like there's there's no way like I've got to get it because I want it <laughs> and here we are now two years later yeah we come from such different backgrounds <laughs> like your story might be relatable to some people but to me it sounds like nothing like my background story into how I got into Kent Union um, which was because of Zed Obviously, he's so <laughs> good. Of all of our problems. Yeah. <laughs> he's so good at, you know, getting people to try out new things. And he really puts you in front of new opportunities, which is really nice. Um, but for me, I hadn't really heard about Kent Union because um, I was at Medway for three years. Um, and I was very focused on, like, studying. So I didn't really get up too much with, like, the Students' Union in Medway um, at that point. And then... Um, yeah, I was supposed to do a placement year as well during my kind of third year, uh, which was COVID uh, times, which was lovely. Mm -hmm. um, I did sport management, so I was going to do a placement in a, in a football club in London. Um, but unfortunately, because of everything stopping, the Premier League not going ahead because of COVID, that kind of fell through. Um, so then I had to figure out some stuff on the spot, which was very difficult and challenging. But, you know, here we are. Um, so I went back to my third year of study and then... As I was getting to the end of it, I spoke with the university and I let them know what had happened with my placement. And they basically told me I could defer it to my fourth year. And then I started looking for jobs and placements and that kind of stuff. And I just couldn't find anything as good as the opportunity that I had before, which was at the sports mm. club. Um, and then I've always done really well in academic stuff. And Zed being the guy that he is, um, having been involved with like Medway Business Society and having had a taste of the union and leadership and being in committees and that kind of stuff, he thought I'd be good for the job. And he was like, oh, you should really do it. So we both ran together. We ran our campaigns from our kitchen and Pier <laughs> Keys. It was very exciting, very fun. Um, lots of crying, mostly because I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Um, I thought 
oh my God, I know nothing about Kent Union. Why am I running to be like, you know, a leader of the organization that I know nothing about? So I had to do a lot of reading on it and like do a bit of research. Um, and then I started to feel a bit more comfortable. So I ran for the, um, during the campaigns and here we are. I won. Zed didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Zed really didn't. Said, let me give you the opportunity <laughs> yeah, that yeah. I won it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how I got involved with Kent Union. And then second time, it was kind of like a no brainer because there were so many things that, you know, I had learned and started to work on and things were picking up that I just yeah. didn't, didn't want to leave it. So here we are. Can't leave a job unfinished. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Um, Especially when you're as competitive as we are, <laughs> uh, it's like you have to finish it. Yeah. Yes, or yes. Um, but I guess one of the things that people want to know the most about is like what it's like to be an officer, actually. Oh. Um, you know, like how much do you need to know and how involved do you need to have been? Um, you know, I personally don't think that that matters just because of my own personal experience of not knowing anything and still being here and being successful and being, you know, I'm not to tip my own <laughs> horn, but I'm a pretty good officer, you know? Um, so I feel like you can learn a lot on the job. There's a lot of, you know, information and people that you can tap into to ask any questions and get any support that you might need to kind of get up to speed if you feel like you don't know as much um, about how the union works, how the university works. Uh, but I don't know how you found um, that, because I'm sure even though you were involved when you got into the organization, there must have been so many new things. A hundred percent. Yeah. I kind of guess that obviously I would be working with student groups. Um, and so in terms of experience there, you just need to be able to talk to people. Mm. I think that is most of my job is talking to people and then they kind of implement my ideas in the background, <laughs> which is great. Mm -hmm. Um, but right now I'm working on stuff I would have never imagined. Like, I'm helping us choose a new financial provider to implement a finance system. What yeah. the heck? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I studied business and I had a finance module, but I wouldn't say it was by far the ones I was good at or anything. Um, but it's just over the last two, one and a half years, like I've grown like this. Yeah. Like crazy. The experiences insane. that you get as well, like, I've interviewed like people that wanted to be like professors or lecturers. Like, yeah. huh, what do you mean? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm choosing who's getting a job at the university. Like those sort of things. Like that's where the real student voice comes in. It's like little things that you didn't really imagine that students had an in like an input to. But we actually do. There's so many different areas of everything of business side of the yeah. students' union, the representation side of the students' union. Um, you know, making social media content. Yeah. <laughs> um, all that kind of stuff is, is pretty cool. You get a good mix of like opportunities and experiences. And I guess it's good for those people that are trying to explore what they're good at, but and might not be super sure what they want to get into. Um, this is a role with so much responsibility and such like a wide range of activities that you could take part in. Um, that is, I think it's suitable for pretty much everyone. Um, as long as you kind of have that, the, the right attitude really. Because you can do what you want essentially. If you are really interested in like policy changes and you want to do lots of writing, write your reports. Not me Set though. <laughs> <laughs> Not you though, but if someone <laughs> wanted to, you know, you could absolutely be the brainy person working in the background mm. um, on super secret projects. You could write all of your papers, do your presentations. Yeah. If you wanted to get into, you know, say even presenting, like get involved with yeah. student media. If you want to organize an event, get them to help or you like out. Or like the awards as well. Absolutely. I spent last spring presenting three award ceremonies which obviously i love because i love the attention but i was so nervous because yeah. i signed myself up for things thinking i'm gonna love them and then when it comes to it i'm like ha, ha. But, but you, then but i love them yeah yeah you did so good at it yeah also what about uh, graduations graduations that's so ah. sick that's my favorite part honestly doing graduation speeches is so good to be celebrating with other students and kind of being a friendly face and being you know um, a role model? Just present. As cheesy as that is. Yeah, I don't know if I would consider myself <laughs> a role model. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think that people definitely see officers as, as that because we are leaders of a huge organization. We have huge responsibility. Um, you know, we get a lot of privilege as well. Um, sometimes <laughs> the, the, 
the privilege that we have as officers, the conversations that we have access to, the tables that we can sit at mm -hmm. with really important, you know, decision makers, both at the, at the Students Union, at the university, with the council, with the government. It's like people underestimate that a little bit, um, but it's such a great opportunity. Um, and yeah, like I said, just a huge privilege and honor to, you know, be speaking for so many students and, and making sure that we're trying the, you know, everything that we can to improve their experience and ex improve their time here at Kent um, is a really cool, cool opportunity. And it's really interesting that we've done that from two different um, sides of the yeah. student experience as well. Obviously, you're coming at it very much from the academic side and you've managed to help people get through their degrees in really tough times. Mm. Uh, and I'm just here for a good time with all of my little events, <laughs> <laughs> making sure that when they're out of the classroom, they're also thriving, meeting new people yeah. and becoming confident global citizens in the whole shebang. Yeah, <laughs> but that's such a big part of like yeah. staying at university, finding your community. It's such a huge part of like wanting to stay. And I guess that's why people also run to be officers. They love Kent so much that they just want to stay for a little bit more. That was me. <laughs> yeah. And if you can also make a positive change while you're doing that you know even better yeah. let's talk about day in the life of an officer mm -hmm. what do your days look like oh every day is different um my role in particular lots of meetings with the university um division divisional directors um with academic staff um with student reps um a lot of the times but also there's a lot of like just random activities like um, for example, this week I've been interviewing um, international students for uh, an advisory board. Um, you know, I'm recording content, I am writing reports and documents, uh, working on campaigns. Um, it's really different every single day. Um, you know, sometimes you might have to go to Medway and do um, a feedback um, forum and ask students um, for feedback or opinions or thoughts on certain issues. So really it's just whatever each day brings, to be honest. What about you? We are total opposites. Like, the more we talk, the more I realize it. Like, when it comes to my days, I have, like, three meetings tops. <laughs> On a good Must day. Nice. <laughs> On a good day. Like, I'm in my role, obviously, I don't have half the boards that you sit on, mm. which is obviously nice for me as a person because my attention span is not is not great. Mm -hmm. I'm very much like, give me a project, give me something hands-on because I can't really sit for hours and listen to people talk. Um, so I'm quite lucky in the sense that the meetings I usually have are all like within Kent Union, like talking to our coordinators and student staff and the whole, you know, internal bit to get events out to the other students. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of, um, you know, working on projects by myself independently. Um, that was something that I had to learn really quickly at the start of my job, that there wasn't going to be someone to, you know, tell me what to do. There's not really a manager who, no. like, holds... Well, students. people hold you accountable. But students are our managers at yeah. the end of the day. But, you know... <laughs> their emails, their messages, you yeah, know, yeah. DMs on Instagram. That's what I remember what I have to do. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it's very much... You know, dealing with questions, queries, a lot of help desk stuff comes to me as well sometimes yeah. because most of the time students have questions about like student groups and activities, um, things go wrong, they need helps with projects or campaigns or events and then I'm there. Um, lots of content. <laughs> Can't get tired of my face, hopefully. Um, and, uh, Thank God you're leaving soon. <laughs> we'll have to find someone else who also loves the limelight like we do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the minute, it's very much focused on events because term two is so full of it. Yeah, I think it's very a very responsive role as well. Yes. Um, so when we first start office officers you get a lot of the training you get a uh, residential so you get to go away um, for a few days with the other officers and trying to work through the plans and see how your projects might map to mm -hmm. student priorities and that's pretty fun and then I guess it's relatively quiet while students are not here it's a lot of like planning and like mm -hmm. uh, you know what's called like backstage stuff and then you know welcome week is very fun usually absolute uh, highlight for us yeah doing the fairs big fair um welcome back fair um and freshers or is it called freshers it's fine you can say freshers <laughs> freshers <laughs> um so yeah doing the fairs um is also pretty fun um, a lot of manual labor, which you wouldn't yeah. expect. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you're coming into this job, get ready to lift some chairs. That's all I have yeah, to say. Yeah. I will make no further comment on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess what are some of your, your highlight as an officer? The best thing that you've done or the best experience you've had? 
I mean, up there, definitely, you'll agree, is graduation speeches. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, getting to speak in the cathedral with, like, 2,000 people is the craziest thing I've ever done. Mm. And just the most rewarding thing. It's so cool. Yeah. Like, I felt like, wow. Um, but also presenting the awards and just being there to see students get recognized for their hard work because I loved going to awards when I was a committee uh, mm. member and then being on the other side and actually handing over the awards was just so wholesome uh, and any opportunity to dress up and luckily in my job you get so many yeah um, anything any fancy committee as well with the university I really like being in the room where it happens yeah I was gonna say that's probably like one of my highlights is just you know being able to tell the university how it is and like going to these meetings and you know be a student expert which at the end of the day you know I feel confident going into these meetings with like you know um, vice chancellor deputy vice chancellor and feeling confident to say whatever I need to say because I'm just echoing what other students have said um, and at the end of the day you know that's a very fun thing to do um, you can either tell them that they're doing things really well or you can tell them off a little bit which is pretty fun um, and as cheesy yeah. as it is that's the one skill you don't need to learn. That's yeah. the one power you have. You have the closest experience to what it is like to be a student at Kent. Mm -hmm. And not a single member of even the executive group can deny that. Yeah. You are the probably the most you know, qualified person in the room when it comes to certain conversation topics. And that's yeah. cool. Yeah, that's really it's cool. pretty good. <laughs> and with highlights come the lowlights. Um, we've got to keep it real. There's some things about this job that aren't as fun as others. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me personally, like we were saying, like I have a lot of very long board meetings, committee meetings, pretty frequently as well. So probably, you know, reading through 150 pages for a single meeting <laughs> is not very fun, um, but it has to be done and you kind of need to prepare yourself and that kind of stuff. Um, but also just being in such a public role is a little bit scary sometimes because um, your wins are really public, but also when you make a mistake, yeah. it's also very public and people find out and know about it. And obviously that's a little bit scary, but you know, I guess that pushes you and motivates you to try your best all the time and make sure that you're doing things the right way. But that's another thing. It's like you, you want to do your best all the time. So you put a lot of pressure on yourself as well. Yeah. And I know we're quite similar in that sense that we, we really want to do the best. Yeah. And then it's not necessarily other people stressing us out. It's, it's ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We do it. Um, you know, mm. wanting to deliver things to a really high standard and then feeling overwhelmed because there's mm. so many different things you yeah. want to be delivering yeah. at the same time. Um, and so. everything, well, at least I think like everything's important. Yeah. Um, so, but I guess, I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase of like, when everything is urgent, nothing is urgent. Yes. That happens a lot. Like w how to prioritize things also kind of sucks because there might be really important things that you want to work on, but you just, you know, you're only human and you only have a certain amount of hours a day that you can, um, you know, work and get your stuff done without, you know, burning out and yeah. getting very tired. Um, That's definitely the one thing we always complain about. There's not enough hours in the day. Yeah, there isn't. There isn't. And we work extra. There's a lot of times where we have to do things outside of nine to five, which then means, you know, we've got to find some time to relax, but mm -hmm. we're usually booked up with meetings yeah. and other things. So when do you relax? And yeah, it's hard. Yeah, but that's why we rely on each other quite a lot. And we're pretty lucky in the sense that me, you and Zed share a space. <laughs> share uh, a brain cell. Yeah, we also share, share a singular brain cell, yeah. <laughs> Getting recognized everywhere kind of sucks as well. Because it's like, sometimes I'll be looking the crustiest I've ever looked. Literally. And so I'll be like, oh my god, I recognize you from social media. And I just cringe so hard inside. It's like, uh, oh, not today. Yeah. If you saw me, no you didn't. No you didn't. No you didn't. Oh, but, crazy times. I am gonna miss it. Yeah, me too. A little bit. Um, and I'm excited to see, you know, where some of the projects that we may have started end up. Mm -hmm. You know, what direction other people take them in. That's gonna be pretty cool. Um, and I'm excited for for more Kent Union and many more years of amazing student representation. Oh, <laughs> that was so cringe. <laughs> Cut that out. Never. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell for more. Yeah, so you can get notified every time that we post a video. And follow us on our personal Instagrams because, you They'll know. They'll be right here in the description box. <laughs> Ta-da! Peace out. <laughs>